my name is Liam McMillan. I'm 47 years old. I'm married to Cathy, um, and we live here in Randallstown in Northern Ireland, County Antrim. My name is Cathy McMillan. I'm married to Liam, and we have nine children. She's been my wife now for 22 years. I can honestly say that we're soulmates, and uh, she's very spiritual, which was the thing that really attracted me to her whenever we first met. When I first met Liam, what attracted to me was that he had a real devotion to prayer and he has a real sense of humour. There's never a dull moment when you're living with Liam and he always tries his best. You know, if he sets his mind to something, he gives it 100% and he just brings his sense of humour um, into everything that he does. And then as the times went on, our friendship grew closer that I wanted the best for Liam, but he didn't have the support. So I always tried to just be there as a friend and try to build him up and try to encourage him to keep going. So I sort of put my feelings to the side a bit as well and tried to be more as a friend to him because I know that's what he needed. And I wanted him then to take the journey that Jesus wanted for him. Kathy and I first met whenever I was about 19. Uh, Kathy was about 17, 17, 18. We both met in Belfast. It was at a, a prayer group, a Marian Movement prayer group. I, I never really took much notice of her when I first met her. And uh, whenever we started to meet together in uh, Youth 2000, which was a, a prayer group that we attended um, on a regular basis for a long time, I didn't even know that she liked me, you know? Um, it was other people that actually said to me, uh, do you not know that she likes you? <laughs> And uh, I says no. I was a wee bit dopey. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't really understand that uh, she had an eye for me. But that's how we first met. And as I say, we were friends for a long time before I actually asked her to marry me. Now, whenever we first met, um, I was emerging from an addiction, uh, an addiction to alcohol and drugs. Coming out of an addiction to drugs and alcohol, I entered a community called the, the Chinakalo community. And it's basically uh, a community that helps people who are addicted to drugs and alcohol uh, to help strengthen their faith in God so that, you know, you can come to a place where you'd be ready for society again. So I was there for w over a year. We prayed the three rosaries every day and uh, we, we, we got mass adoration of the Blessed Sacrament. So I was very connected to God in a spiritual sense. and. Uh, I just felt our Lord saying to me in those moments of closeness that Cathy is a good woman for you to spend the rest of your life with. And so uh, when I left Chinakalo, I asked Cathy if she wanted to go to Mount Mallory, which is a place where uh, allegedly Our Lady was appearing for so many years. And, and uh, so we were in the grotto, we were praying. And we, we, we decided to do an all night vigil together, just the two of us. So I said to Cathy, uh, say, Cathy, so wait, would you like to get married? And I actually, I'm not joking you, I felt Our Lady giggling and saying, just ask her. <laughs> so I eventually turned around and I said to Cathy, so when am I get married? And I think she near fell off her seat. <laughs> she kind of just parked up and said, what? You want to get married? And I says, I would, I would like to marry you if, if you would take me. And she kept me sweating for 24 hours. She didn't give me an answer. She says, I'll have to think about it. And uh, boy, it was the longest 24 hours of my life, uh, waiting to hear what she was going to say. And then the next day she says, yes, I would like to marry you. Liam went very quiet and <laughs> he turned around and he says, so when are we getting married then? <laughs> and I sort of was really taken back and very, very shocked. And it was like, I was dumbfounded. I didn't know where it was this come from because it was so out of the blue um, and I just, didn't say yes or no and then went home to the B&B &B, and then it was really only the next morning where I sort of said yes you know I would love to get married. I had a, a dream about Our Lady and Our Lady in the dream came in in front of me and looked at me with this look of love that I have never seen in the face of any person on this earth and she bent down and kissed me in the forehead. And from that day on, that's when I started to pray and started to search for God. And Kathy was the same. We developed a real love for Our Lady. 
and that's the reason why we chose the 8th of December to get married because it was a feast of the Immaculate Conception and it was the best day of my life. The whole purpose of our marriage is to be open to life and we, I see each child as somebody who's created in God's image and likeness and they're precious. And, you know, when, when God created them, he created them forever, to live forever. And it's a great honour and privilege for me to be the father of nine children and to be married to Cathy. And it's an amazing experience. It's, it, don't get me wrong, it can be chaotic at times, but um, the joys outweigh the sorrows, as they say. And I just see it as an honour and a privilege to be able to see each child from the moment they're born till uh, they grow up at all their different stages and levels of growth. I really enjoy being a father of a large family. There's never a dull moment, as they say. I enjoy uh, the quiet moments as well. I'm gonna go to the legs of adoration. I enjoy being able to spend that quiet time with God, but I then hopefully bring that time that I spent with God back into my family uh, and try to be the father that they need me to be and the husband that Cathy needs me to be. So to me, my family is just everything. It's a mission to help God to bring up people who will love him, serve him, and someday please God be with him forever in heaven. Nine children. The oldest is Joseph. I can still remember that first moment when Joseph was born and that when that wee face just looked up at me, you know, and it was just amazing. Um, and watching his wee personality grow. He's very witty. He likes to be sarcastic in his talking and he's, he's very kind and generous. Our second eldest is called Sean. He was always very soft uh, and always very uh, sensitive. A heart full of love. He was always good with other children growing up. He was always able to gather the, all the other children around him. He's got a very deep spiritual life and he is a fully trained gym instructor and personal trainer. He takes his health and his fitness very seriously. I'm very happy to be in a big family that helps all of us stay close together. And probably one of the biggest things is when we pray, it always brings everyone together as well. That's one thing that keeps our family happy and keeps our mum and dad close as well. Uh, one positive thing about being in a big family is it's easier, I think, to be social outside when you're in a big family. Like, I can talk to a lot more people easily because of how many are in my house. So I enjoy all the things we do together. We're all, we all connect very easily in our family. Our third child is called Trez. She is 15. Trez would be the inquisitive one of the family. She likes to question things. Um, she's also kind-hearted as well, and she'd be a wee bit jokey and sarcastic as well in whichever she's talking. Um, she just loves that, you know, trying to get into things, you know, like, what can I say or how can I do that? Grace and Mary Rose are the fourth and fifth of our children. Um, Grace has always been great with children. She has a very motherly heart, you know, from she was a child. She's a force to be reckoned with. Uh, you don't mess with her, <laughs> you know. And Mary Rose has always been very quiet. She's the quiet one. She notices if her mommy's not feeling well or if I'm not feeling well, she can pick up on things like that. Two wonderful kids. It's good to have load of siblings. I'm closest to Michael because we're the closest age and I enjoy drawing with my sister Grace and my brother Michael and then Lucia and Noah. Uh, they're my younger siblings so they need someone to talk to or like to help. It's really fun to have like loads of siblings to hang out with because you're never lonely. Our sixth child is called Michael. Michael is tame. Michael is always very active as a child. He was always jumping about and he was always very, very loving and very affectionate. Um, and then he was diagnosed with autism there just last year. I did find the diagnosis hard, but at the same time, it's a blessing because Michael is such a wee joy and 
he lights up the room no matter where he is and he draws people to him uh, he's so affectionate and so loving and he's very very in tune with things you know, he could talk to people and come away with a smile he just brings so much joy to people he's just different in a different way but he's amazing I love my family because they're really nice to me and they're honestly like my best friends and I like I love them a lot. Um, I love being in a, a big family because we can go around and help everybody and we can play games with each other. I think it's like bigger help to clean with more people and I really love my family a lot. Our seventh and eighth children is Lucia and Noah. And Lucia is, she's five or six, isn't she? What age is she? She's five. She's five. I even forget the name, the age of your own <laughs> children when you have so many. So she's five and Noah is three. You know, when they're that age, they're the ones that cause the noise in the house. But they just bring us so much joy and we just love them to bits. I love my family. Our ninth child is called Lily. She's a real wee blessing to the whole family. She's so funny and the way she interacts with them all, like from the oldest to the second youngest, um, it's just amazing. And watching her wee personality grow, especially with watching the rest of them, it grows that wee bit more. It's just real joy. Whenever we find out that we're pregnant with any of our kids, we take them as a blessing. You know, each and every single one of them are a blessing. You know, I have nine kids, I did have two miscarriages as well, like, so we have two wee souls in heaven as well. And each one of them is a blessing. I'm a humble postman, you know, and Cathy's a homemaker. She stays at home with the children. So our finances are limited, um, but, um, and you know, most weeks we're scraping the bottom of the barrel, but God always sends us what we need when we need it. Through the times in our marriage, and it's been 22 years now, through those 22 years, there's been times where Kathy and I didn't know where we were going to get the money for our next meal. Uh, there's been days where there hasn't been any money in the bank. And we've prayed and we've said, look, don't worry, Kathy. Trust in God, he'll, he'll get us through this. You know, God never lets us down. That's so true, God never lets us down, never. A question I would get asked a lot is, you know, did you always want a big family? And the answer to that is no, I never set out to have nine children, but we you know whenever I cho chose to get married, um, I choose to what God wanted for me. You know, we were open to many children God wanted to send us and, you know, me and Ava both be very much open to life. The more I've grew as a mother in years, the more I've learned that my daily duties day to day is a prayer if I offer it up. You know, should it be washing the dishes or dressing the kids or, you know, washing whatever it may be, you know, if I'm offering it up in a prayer every day, that stands by me and that gives me the strength that I need to get through the day um, and that's individually and then with me and Liam as well we you know to pray together and the most important thing which I grew up with myself as well is the family rosary um, it's very important to us the family that prays together stays together it doesn't make things like disappear or your struggles any of the less or your trials you still get your trials and your sufferings but it makes it easier and it makes it more joyful because there's a purpose there. I was travelling to a vocations weekend in Dromalis in Larne and it was my first experience of the rosary and when they were praying the rosary um, I just felt this amazing peace come over me, a peace that I'd never felt before and it was through that experience of that peace that I knew that I'd found what I was looking for and that it was uh, through praying the rosary and because I had that conviction then, going into my marriage with Cathy, that the rosary was so powerful and uh, so important. Um, the two of us made a, a commitment to pray the rosary every day, and it has brought an, a, an amazing peace 
into our lives. We still have our struggles, and, but we know that we can go to Mary and pray and she will look after it and she, will al she always does come through. She always provides an answer. Kathy and I both knew that setting off in our lives together that we had one objective, a, a united objective, and that was that we were going to do our best to live our life with God because we intended not to forget God in our marriage. We made a commitment to pray together every day. Uh, we knew that by getting married as Catholics that we it was one of the obligations of marriage to remain open to life. But as the time went on and as the months went on, nothing was happening. So I did make an appointment with the doctor and they told me at that stage that I had a condition called polycystic ovaries, which meant I wasn't ovulating. Whenever they said this to me, the only option they gave me at that stage was I would maybe have to go down the road of IVF or to do something. They would have to test lame, which would have been against our faith. So we came away from that appointment and we prayed about it and we turned to God and we said like, God what do you want us to do here because we are open to life but obviously with the way I was do I need to do something or what is and then a priest friend of ours introduced us to a um, clinic in Galway. The doctor diagnosed me with the polycystic ovaries and he said there were certain hormones that I was imbalanced with. Basically he is a, a Catholic doctor who um, is able to get to the root cause of whatever a person's fertility issues are. So we went private with him. We just trusted in God that that was the way to do it. So I did the treatment that he said, but um, <laughs> I've, whenever we were on the treatment, there was a certain stage where we were supposed to abstain, but I actually got pregnant uh, with our first child, uh, which was amazing because I didn't even have to have that much treatment. I was only on the treatment, so I was able to get pregnant naturally. And then I actually got pregnant straight away. Um, I was pregnant again, so because there was only 11 months difference between our first two. And then I came to a stage then having the first child and then having the second so quick because I was obviously still fertile. I was open to life, but do I still have to be productive and do something about it or do I have to stand back? And I was really, really praying about it and praying about it and asking God that should I do something? And then I ended up pregnant with our third. So I just took that, that, you know, God has this and God knows what he's doing. So we were just open to whatever God wanted for us and the children kept coming. And um, we have nine now. We believe that, you know, if God sends a child, he's going to look after it, you know. So it's been a, a really interesting and challenging journey to uh, being open to life, but God has really blessed us in so many ways. I heard about a, a consecration to St. Joseph and Cathy and I, and we did the 33-day consecration to St. Joseph. I see St. Joseph as provider of the Holy Family. I can relate to St. Joseph as a father and as a husband, and we didn't have a big enough car to be able to take the kids to Mass together. And a couple of days after we finished the consecration, um, my wife Cathy got a phone call from a friend of hers and says, Cathy, um, I've got a car if you want it, just out of the blue. And I remember Cathy that day, whenever I was in work, phoning me to tell me this, and I couldn't believe it. I says, there we go, there's God again, there's St. Joseph looking after us and providing for us. So Cathy and I went up to get the car, it was a, a brilliant car. And the girl who gave us the car says, I've also got a Christmas present for you. And I says, you've got a Christmas present? You don't have to give us a car, you know, you don't have to give us a Christmas present as well. So she handed us this uh, uh, wrapped up present and it was a picture of St. Joseph. Uh, I, was, I was actually nearly crying because I couldn't have got a clearer message from St. Joseph that, you know, don't worry, we're looking after you. Everything's in control. watching the children interact with one another and the different age groups from 18 down till 
I'm nearly one so there's so much going on and there's so many different age groups but watching them interact and helping each other um, in wee ways like a few weeks ago we all were down with the flu and the kids especially can see me I suppose being the mother I don't realise if I'm sick you know everything else sort of falls to the side maybe that I don't realise and they pick up on me things and Grace came in one of the other girls came in the other day and she says mummy Noah and Lucia are standing out in the trampoline saying a wee Hail Mary for you to be better. And even, I was just in awe at that, you know, because you don't realise that you're instilling the faith in them just by bringing them up and teaching them the simple things in life, then they interact themselves. And even the older ones, uh, because it is hard now, especially living in the world for them to grow up and to keep their faith. But when you instill it in them and you just keep it from a young age, especially with you know the family rosary and keeping that prayer, uh, keeping close to your lady and it's just it's just amazing watching the wee personalities grow and I just feel so privileged to be a mummy to a large family. We believe that God ultimately is the one who decides um, how many children we'll have because it's an element of faith, you know, people people get scared that, oh, I can only afford to have one child or two children. But what people seem to forget is that when you put your faith in God, when you trust God, He blesses you. And if God sends a child, He will provide for that child. And that has been our, our experience as a large family that God has provided. You know, there hasn't been uh, one day that has been passed in our 22 years of marriage and throughout my whole life as a person where I didn't have three meals every day and a roof over my head and a nice warm bed to sleep in, you know, and if, you, if you've got those three things, you're doing okay, you know. For Kathy and I, what's more important is that we remain open to God and to the gift of life. We are the McMillan family. We are the McMillan family.